Hello and welcome to Liz's Craft Room and today I'm going to show you how to make the origami bag. I've had so many questions about it and so many requests so here we go I'm going to show you how to do it. So first of all I'll show you the ones I've made already. So this is one example and at the moment I've actually put a little bit of embroidery on the front of this one as well. That's optional um, and this is this can either be the side that you want to show or it can be the other side. Now you might be wondering what I mean by that. Well the other one is showing you the other side. So this one now has the little origami pockets at the front. So it's entirely up to you which way around you want it. If you want it the other way around you just literally turn it inside out. And that then becomes the one that we were just looking at before with the embroidery on. Like that. <clears throat> and it still draws up beautifully and you can have it as tight or as loose as you want so depending on which side you feel you want to have planes today and patterns or whether the other way around it's entirely up to you but I think um, that it's just a lovely easy bag to make so if I pop those to one side the first thing you need to do is to cut two squares out okay so this is my two squares um, lovely contrasting fabric so it's entirely up to you which ones you choose but all, all you've got to remember is the, the one that you want on the outside in the end is the one that we're going to focus on mainly today so those two fabrics then are then stitched all the way around so right sides together I think this is about 17 inches across here but this it depends on how big you want the bag to be if it's this size bag you want to create then um, that was about 18 inches so 17 18 19 inches is a good size bag but you might want to make little posy bags for bridesmaids for instance in which case maybe 8 inches try that and see and also if you've got some scraps of fabric it's a good way of actually um, trying some out think about a charm pack 10 inch squares fabulous okay so what you're going to do now is you're going to machine all the way around the four sides leaving a little gap here for turning right side out okay so just to make a little bit of time for us we can concentrate on other things I've already done that so here is my two pieces of fabric there we go let's do it to the dark side so what I've done there is I've machined all the way around, I left a little gap, um, I've turned it right side round and I've actually top stitched this. So I don't know if you'll be able to see that but I've actually top stitched it just to neaten it off. And also where the little turning point was, I, I actually don't know where it is now, instead of doing a hand stitch or top stitching that closure, I thought well I might as well top stitch all the way around and that gives a nice neat effect. So here we go. Now this is one of the most important things you need to do. So, but don't get stressed about it. It's dead easy. So we've got our square. I've got it on uh, the like, let's say the diamond way. All I'm going to do is fold this in half. Now, because I want this beautiful red to be the main focus of my bag. Um, like this design was my main focus where the pockets are on the inside of the bag um, so I want the red to do the same so I'm doing red right size to right size like that and folding it into a triangle there's my fold line here now what we need now is to draw some lines on this to do a bit of measuring now we know this is about 17 inches so that's 12 little bit more well actually it's a bit more because on the on the diagonal isn't it it's about 22 I'm not going to get too hung up about the measurements I'm, I'm going to sort of wing it a little bit I need my bag to be square do you see how that bag needs to be square so if I bring this one in again it's that's the square okay that's what we're going to try and create in fact that's that's not a bad idea putting that down there and measuring but just for this um, instance we'll just guess this so I'm going to measure in from one of the corners, seven inches, and I've got my um, erasable pencil here, so don't worry that I'm, I'm not marking my fabric, well I am, but <laughs> it's going to come out when I press it. So seven inches from that little point there, so we now need to do seven inches from this little point here. <clears throat> there we go. This is not an exact science. It'd be nice if you could follow the line, especially because this is dots, if you're using stripes then the same sort of rule applies um, it's quite wide isn't it maybe we want to come in a little bit so I'm going to machine this just a little bit more in there 
but I'm going to start here and here. I'm happier with that now. So I'm just going to machine that now. Just going to bring my machine in. There we go. And I'm literally a few little back stitches. side too. Let's do it so I can see the line. Don't worry if those points don't meet. This is not an exact science. So I would say it was just about seven and a quarter, seven and a half inches in from the corners. But that's on nine. You, yours is going to be different because of the size of the squares you're going to make. So we're just neaten these off. Okay. Now the next thing to do, again this is quite an important part too, is that you need to actually turn these corners here, these, these end pieces. This is your 90 degree angle. So to turn those in on themselves. So all I'm going to do is this. Put my, I'll probably put my hand in just to make it easier. So my finger's right into the corner there. I'm just bringing that across. Yeah? And then the same on the other side. Again, I've got my finger right in that corner there. And this is where a nice little press with the iron will work. Now you can see it's coming together now, can't you? <clears throat> Let's just make sure that's nice and squarish. Okay, so that's practically done. What I've done in my other bags is actually stitch this here. So these at the moment are loose. We could easily undo that again. But because it's a bag, I don't want that to happen. So what you'd need to do now is to machine all the way through. Now if I, I'm going to pin a little bit of this. And I'll pin the other side so it's in place. You'll be, make, you'll be able to make these, you'll be able to do one of these an hour. Now if I put my hand in there, I can actually go all the way through. Can you see? So my hand can go all the way through that. So this is how we machine it. So I'll pop it into the machine now. So where I've top stitched, I'm going to make it a decorative feature. And I'm going to go a little bit next to it, about a quarter of an inch next to it. You might want to tack this. I'm just going to do this quite quickly so you guys can see. Let's have a look. Get those seams fairly well lined up. There we go. So a little bit of a top stitch again. Back stitch just to hold it in place. And then we're going to go all the way along. And this creates our little pockets. Now those pockets can be either inside or outside of your bag. So again, we'll just come along here, make sure I'm not stitching all the wrong things. I think the white on the, the white stitching on the red is really very nice. If you've done a little quilted piece, it would just be lovely to do. That would be really nice. I, as you, I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't use any fleece or anything with this at all, or any form of stabiliser, um, because I want it to be soft and squidgy. You, you may want it to be a little bit more um, um, solid, if you like, a bit more structure. So you might want to use, well I wouldn't use the foam, I'd use the fleece. So just trimming that off there. And then we just put our hands back in there again. Okay, so that has now created those little pockets. And although I can still put my hand through there, look, um, it still creates a nice... And in actual fact, I was thinking about this earlier. What you could do... Let's just get my pokey tool in there, poke those corners out. What you could do <clears throat> is to um, top stitch all, all the way along here. 
just to hold those pocket that pocket in place that that could be quite nice it needs experimenting with okay the next thing is to make your casing now the casing is going to go straight across here uh, like a half an inch across each side so I'm going to draw a line just so you can see now I go from stitch line to stitch line which is about there and hopefully my dots are fairly straight um, it's always nice to do yourself a drawn line because then I'm just going to do a half an inch thereabouts uh, just over a centimetre if you're metric same on the other side so straight across my dots are a bit out here not to worry time it's, oh, it's not too bad time it's gathered up you might notice and again just over the half an inch again Okay. Now don't worry about the fact that um, this is closed here, we've done that top stitching, because what we'll do is we'll get our uh, unpicker tool and we'll just unpick all those seams there. So all we're going to do now, <clears throat> again a little back stitch just to hold, and you're just going doing one of those flaps at a time. Obviously, you could you could be really careful about <clears throat> where you st where you start and where you finish. Um, so it's lovely and neat. Um, but by the time you've gathered it up, put your put your ribbon in. Do you see how easy this comes together? It's such a great little bag. It's just amazing. So again, on the other side little back stitch just to catch. Now all of these black lines will come out. Um, if, if you don't want to do that, you could do a tacking line. Um, but the main thing is to go from the stitching either, either end. And you've got all these threads to neaten off. But what we'll do is we'll, we'll jump to the ones that I've made you how to put the red ribbon in actually. So what you've done is now you've made a casing to pop your ribbon in. Now how this works, so here we go, if I turn this right side around you'll see now, you know we, I was talking before about this being the main fabric, I quite like, I quite like the pocket on the outside of this but the other thing is we can turn this the other way around and have it so the red dots are the feature and again you might just want to poke those corners out just to give it uh, a good shape so your the red side now is the main focus but when it's drawn up with the ribbon these little white bits here will just um, poke through and I think that looks quite sweet um, so what we'll do now is, and we can see probably a little bit better on the dark, see the casing line here? All of it, obviously all of these stitches need to be neatened. So you need to get your quick pick on tool and just go in between those seams there and just unpick that there and your top stitching as well and the ribbon goes through. Let me just bring one over that I did before. Let's get this one here. So with the ribbon... Um, I wonder if I can undo this. Let's, let's just do it. So you need two pieces of ribbon, um, and you need quite uh, you can need quite a length actually. So let's just take one of them out, left one in. So let's, let's just give it a measure. So 12, 24, 38, about 38 inches. Uh, I don't know what that is in centimeters, but. 38 inches, I'm sure you can do a conversion. So you can see it's quite a bit, if I put it out to the side there, you can see it's um, quite quite long. Now if I get my little safety pin here, <coughs> I'm going to show you how this is threaded. So one has been threaded already, look we can see that, it's already there. But all you're going to do 
Where this starts and finish on this side, we want to start and finish on this side. So we're going to start threading in this end. So you can see, can you see the ribbon that comes in from this side? Okay, so this is our starting point. So all we need to do is thread that ribbon through. Forget that you've already got ribbon in there. Honestly, your, the casing is half an inch-ish, depending on the, the width of your ribbon. Um, and it's going to easily take two lengths of this ribbon together, no problem. So look, did you see what I did? So I've come from, started from this side, I've come all the way through that casing. Now I want to flip my bag over and now I'm just going to come in on the other side. So I'm just going to go in on there. And that's what gives us the loop. And that's what, when we actually draw this up together, that's what gives us that lovely effect. So again, here we go. So there's the loop that I've just created. So I'm just pulling that tight now. Okay. All right. And then take the safety pin out using a quilting pin, very useful. And all we can do now is pop that knot back in. You could actually do beads on this, wouldn't that be fab? And now all we need to do is just pull those ends. And because you've got those loops there, it just brings it all in. Now, personally, I don't like it quite so tight. So there we are. And again, don't forget, you can have it either side. So I've had to turn that around. Lost my pocket somewhere. Here we go. There we go. Do, do, do. Go that way. I think that's quite pretty that way. So depending on your fabric and depending on the look you want to get, then actually you want to make a few. But there's your pocket there. Like I say, you could top stitch along there to make it a proper pocket because you know we can put our hand all the way through. But there we are. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that. I hope you understand the principles of making it. Um, and, um, and have a lovely time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.